dear friends, um, I have written a very important book of which I am extremely proud. It's called An Entirely New History of India. Uh, this book actually, I think for the first time, rewrites Indian history as much as it happened from the prehistoric times till today. I have tried to concentrate on what is controversial, what has been wrongly written, whether it is by British historians with a view to you know, downgrade India, downgrade Indian civilization, or even by Marxist historians who have taken a very foreign philosophy and clamped it on India. So it starts with prehistoric times. There are many controversies that India did not possess iron mastery, for instance. But we see with the Ashoka pillar in the Kutab Minar Delhi, which is, which is a pillar made uh, by Emperor Chandragupta, that Indians had mastered the iron to the point that 3,000 year, years later, it has not rusted. The, the pillar in the Kutub Minar has not rusted. And scientists all over the world wonder why. What was this mastery that Indians had that for 3,000 years there is no rust, much before stainless steel? And then the horse controversy. Many historians have said, oh, Indians didn't have horses. It came with the Aryan invasion. They only had elephants, but this is not true. There have been skeletons found uh, in India, in Punjab, that show that Indians had horses. Only the elephant was privileged because it's considered sacred in Indian tradition. So people like Prithviraj Chauhan fought with elephants, and of course, the Arab invaders who had horses were able to be faster and to encircle them. Then go on to Alexander the Great. No doubt Alexander was great, but uh, his historians show that uh, he, his march into India was victorious, whereas he encountered so many difficulties. He was wounded in India and actually died from these wounds. And also he had great admiration for Indian philosophy, Indian yogi. There are many stories about him meeting some sadhus and getting wisdom from them. He's even supposed to have brought one back with him to Greece. So this is another controversy. Then you have Ashoka. As you know, Nehru used Ashoka because he converted to Buddhism. Buddhism is politically correct. Now, the truth is Ashoka converted to Buddhism before the Kalinga battle and for political reason. At that time, there was a tussle between Jainism and Buddhism. And for political reason, Ashoka wanted to counterbalance the influence of the Jain. So he converted to Buddhism. And he actually, Ashoka was a very cruel man. He was called Chan Ashoka. Ashoka the cruel. Oh, again, this is history set properly, set right. Then we go on down, you know, there are so many things in Indian Sea which are wrong. Uh, for instance, the Mughals, uh, Aurangzeb is treated as, a, as an icon by most uh, modern historians, whether Indians or, or, or Westerners, but actually he was a monster in his own words, because uh, Aurangzeb left firmans, edicts, that showed every order that he passed, uh, raising temples, killing Hindus, forbidding Hindus to reign, to ride horses or elephants or palanquins, trampling Hindus with his elephants when they protested the Jizya tax. Even Akbar, for that matter, uh, probably the better of uh, the Mughal emperors, but nevertheless, he killed 30,000 Hindus in Chitor, and the great Maharana Pratap fought him and held him at bay in Adil Gati. And this is not recognized in, uh, in history books. Uh, we, we praise the Maharajas to heaven, but actually Maharana Pratap was the only Rajput who fought the Mughals. All the other Maharajas gave gold or their daughters in marriage to the Mughal kings and princes. So it's important to set history straight. Then you have the War of Independence, the first war of independence called the Great Indian Mutiny. But in my mind, and I think based on the record, it was a war that was done to bring back the last Mughal emperor to the throne, which they did. 
And then, of course, the British defeated them. It was a very cruel war, and Muslims played a very important role in that war, and a very bloody one. The cruelty, the killings of English by the Muslims was unparalleled. But again, this is not told in your history books. And you come to Indian independence movement, uh, most books give the credit to Mahatma Gandhi and Nehru. No doubt they played their role, but much, much before them, you had Shwe Aurobindo or Tilak, who were foreigners of the Indian independence movement and who fought, if necessary, with weapons, because they thought that violence in the spirit of the Bhagavad Gita was justified to kill, to throw out the invaders. This was the right attitude. So we need to give them credit. And we come down, come down, and we see that today we have Mr. Narendra Modi, a remarkable prime minister who has been maligned by both the Indian media and the Western press. And we need to set the record straight. For instance, the removal of Article 370 has never been explained properly in the West, that you had a provision for Muslims from the Valley of Kashmir to come all over India, establish businesses, buy land, buy houses. And indeed, we see today that Muslims for the Valley of Kashmir are dominating the souvenir trade in Pune, in Delhi, in Pondicherry. They are the ones who dom dominate the souvenir trade. But Indians could not go to the Valley of Kashmir or to the whole of Kashmir for that matter. They could not buy land. They could not start business. They could not have houses. So Mr. Body set a wrong right. And again, we need to rectify this very, very recent history. So you have to read my book. I have actually, I have written it for the glory of India, because I love your country, because I think your country is great. And because I think that Indian history needs to be rewritten correctly. So please buy this book and spread it amongst your friends. Thank you. Namaste. Book is on the screen now. Uh, getting forgetting Guruji's blessings. Book is the an entirely new history of India by Francois Gauthier, and it's available at GarudaBooks.com. Garuda was a publication house started with Gurudev's blessings, and Garuda has been taking flight with Gurudev's blessings. Um, so the book is available at GarudaBooks.com.